Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Git video tutorial. Today, I'm going to answer a whole bunch of questions that I have received. Most specifically, I'm going to cover and demonstrate a workflow option called Fork and Pull. I'm also going to cover how to use multiple GitHub accounts on the same computer, and I'm also going to cover SSH keys and a whole bunch of other different things. If you haven't seen any of the other videos, you pretty much should watch them. I provide a link to them in the description underneath of the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do here is cover how to generate SSH keys. Basically, you see the command right here in front of you. Just going to type in ssh-keygen-trsa-uppercase-c, and then you're going to put in your email address. Now, the reason why you're going to want to use these is SSH keys are going to allow you to identify trusted computers without the need of passwords and such. And I'm also going to show you how to generate multiple versions of these keys so you can have multiple different accounts all on one computer. Then what you're going to want to do is define exactly what you want the name of this to be and I just typed in Derek Banis because each of these SSH keys are going to have a name associated with them. After you do that you're going to enter in a passphrase and then you're going to have a public key that's going to be generated as well as what we're calling a random art image and it's just a bunch of squiggles. Whenever you type this in, you'll see it. Basically, the reason why we have the random art image is because it's a lot easier to recognize and validate by eye than a whole bunch of just random digits. After we do that, we're going to type in change directory tilde forward slash dot ssh and this is going to be where all of our SSH keys are going to be stored. And you can see right there is Derek Banis, and then here is the public key right next to it. Now what I'm going to do is open up my public key inside of Vim, and I just decided to black out everything here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this private key that I have inside of Vim, and I'm just going to copy it. And you're going to want to copy everything from right here where it says ssh-rsa the whole way down to your email address. And then next I'm going to go over to GitHub and sign in. Now we're going to go up here inside of GitHub and specifically account settings and click on that. And then over on the left sidebar we're going to click on ssh keys. And of course this is going to be the key that you want to associate specifically with this account on GitHub. Then you're going to come over here and click on add ssh key this guy right here. And then you're going to want to type in a title for this key and then the key itself. And as you can see, I have SSH the whole way through the email address, just so you know exactly what you want to put inside of there. And then after you type in that key, and we're copy and paste it in there anyway, you're going to click on add key. And then this window is going to pop up and you're going to know that it has been stored inside of GitHub. And now what I'm going to do is go over specifically how to generate multiple GitHub accounts. And to do that, basically what we're going to do is just use different SSH keys. So in this situation, previously I had my Dirk Banis at Verizon email address. This time I'm going to throw in my Gmail address. And again, it's the same exact command, ssh-keygen-trsa-c, and then whatever email address you want to associate with over in GitHub. Just like before, we're going to come over here and give it a name. This one I'm going to call new think tank, and there you can see it. Again, a public key is going to be generated, as well as random art image, which you're going to see right here. Once again, you're going to go into change directory, tilde forward slash dot ssh. This is the location for all your ssh keys. And you're going to be able to see over here, new think tank, new think tank, there you go. Now we're going to go back over into GitHub, except this time I'm going to be in a completely different GitHub account. And I'm going to click on account settings again. Then over inside of my terminal, I'm going to open up the public key using Vim again. I'm going to come in here, copy the entire key again from SSH the whole way to the end of the email. And again, give it a title and then copy and paste the key inside of here and then click on add key. Okay, so we use different unique names for these two different keys and we use names that made sense. Now what we need to do is to tell SSH about these unique keys that we just created. And to do that, you're just going to type in ssh-add tilde forward slash dot ssh forward slash, and then you're going to type in your different unique names. And they're exactly the same ones I just used. It's Derek Banis and New Think Tank. And now what we need to do is come in here and create a configuration file that we are going to use to associate different hosts with different unique keys. So to simply create a file inside of your terminal, you're going to type in touch tilde forward slash dot ssh forward slash config. And then inside of Vim, we're going to open up a config file. 
Then inside of this config file, we are going to define two different types of hosts. Normally what you do, and by host, this is just going to reference a specific host using a specific SSH key. So again, you see the Derek Banis and the Think Tank. We just saw those, and that's going to identify that specific SSH key that we want to use. And that is basically how we're going to identify ourselves. You can see right here, we're using GitHub for both of these because we're using GitHub. But however, whenever we want to log in as new Think Tank on GitHub, we're going to use this abbreviation. And whenever we want to log in using our main account, we're going to type in github.com. Of course, you could change these and use numerous. You could have, I don't know, 10 or 15 or 20 of these different accounts going through exactly the same process I just showed you right here. And for this tutorial, I decided to use my crazy tip calc. Again, this is just to do something. So I'm just going to change over to that directory. And you can see here, I'm going to list out all the different files. Then over inside of GitHub, you can see crazy tip calc. It's right here. And you can also see if you go into GitHub with this account, it's going to give you a brief explanation of how to stage your directories and how to commit them. Say all this stuff right here, but I'm just going to cover that here real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of Vim and I'm just going to open up my Android manifest file just for a file to come in here and mess around with. Just like before, I'm just going to type in a random comment and I'm going to save that. And then of course I'm going to stage the entire directory with all the changes and then I'm also going to commit it with a dash M and just type in initial commit. And now what I'm going to do is create an alias called my origin and as you can see right here github dash ntt you know by looking at this real quickly because my default is github.com in this situation I'm using my new think tank account on github and then I just have to come in here and type in a colon and then new think tank forward slash crazy tip calc dot git and you can see that over here then if i want to push all my changes over i'm just going to type in git push my origin master and the very first time you do this it's going to say that host github can't be established and basically what it's saying is it's not aware of it and what it's going to do however is it's going to show you the public key for github which you can see right here then, if you go to this directory right here, help.github.com, articles, blah, 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 you're going to be able to see GitHub's public key, and it's right here. So if we just look 1627AC, blah, 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 jump back over into here, 1627AC, there you can see, and you can trust that this is GitHub. So we're just going to type in yes. Then you're going to see right here that it has listed out that we are permanently going to add github.com, so you do not see that warning every single time you do this. And if I go to my new Think Tank account on GitHub and open up Crazy Tip Calc, you're going to see that all of the files are here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my regular old Verizon account to log into GitHub. After I log into GitHub, I'm going to click on Explore right here, and I'm going to look up that repository that I just uploaded. I'm just going to type in new Think Tank forward slash Crazy Tip Calc, which is the location for the file, and I can see that here it is indeed. Now there's a couple different things I can do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this repository. So I'm going to come over here and just click on this little checkboard right here. Then inside my terminal, I'm going to change to whatever directory I want to save this clone to. And I'm just going to type in git clone and I'm going to paste in the location that I have right here. And it's going to clone or copy all of the files that are currently on my new Think Tank account over here into this directory right here. And there you can see if I type in change directory to that location, ls, that there are all the files. Okay, so now I'm going to cover the fork and pull workflow. Now the way the fork and pull works is that anyone can fork a repository and then make changes locally. However, thankfully, they don't have the ability to push potentially damaging code back up into the repository. They can, however, request that the host of the repository, the owner of the repository, pull their changes after they make them by making what is called a pull request. And the reason I decided to cover this is it's a very common workflow in the open source community, which everyone seems to be very into. So just like before, I went in here and I found Crazy Tip Calc, which is a repository I want to work with. And if I want to fork it, just come over here and click on fork. Whenever you do the directory is going to open up and show you all the files you have right here you're going to want to come over here and copy this directory right here again by clicking on the clipboard right there then I'm going to change to a directory called git clones and if I click on ls it's not going to show me anything and then to clone that fork I'm just going to go git clone HTTPS github and there is the location for it 
And you can see in this situation, it says Derek Bannis, which is my version instead of New Think Tank, which was the original holder of that repository. And it's going to clone everything. And then on my Derek Bannis account, which is the account that forked that, you can see right here it says forked from, and it shows where it forked from. You're going to see all the directories and all the files there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over in my terminal and type in git remote add upstream and then I'm going to refer to this repository as you can see right there and basically what this is going to do is it's going to assign the original remote and not the fork to the keyword upstream. Now what I can do is just go git fetch upstream and it's going to pull in changes made in the original repository without affecting any of my local files. And you can see all the files right there. Now let's say I want to go into Vim and change the Android manifest file again. I can do that. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to put three inside of here instead of random comment like it was before. I'm of course going to be able to stage this new file and then also commit it. And I'm then going to be able to push it, push my fork onto GitHub. And I'll just do that by going git push origin master. Then if I jump over into GitHub and click on Android Manifest, it's going to show random comment three right there. But this is the fork, say, initial fork. This isn't the main repository that I forked from. Another thing I can do is come in here and type, and this is in the terminal again, is just type in git merge upstream forward slash master. And what that's going to do is merge files on GitHub with all of my local files. Now in the situation in which I think my files should actually be merged with the original repository, I can make what is called a pull request. And all I need to do is just go into my version of crazy tip calc. This is the forked. And then come down here where it says compare, review, create a pull request. The important part here is the create a pull request because that's what we're going to do. And whenever you click on that, you're going to see all the changes that are listed out here and down here, as well as other data that has been associated with this fork version, like the number of commits and or the files changed or the comments or how many contributors are involved in this. And then if you click on create pull request, what you should do is leave a really detailed reason why the pull request should be accepted and then come over here and click send pull request right here. And then you can see exactly what was sent over to the owner of the original repository. And you can check back here to see if your pull request was accepted. Now we're back to New Think Tank. This is the owner of the original repository. If they want to see the pull requests they have, they are listed right here. They can just click on pull requests. And whenever they do, they're going to see a list of all of their pull requests. There would normally be a lot more than this, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And if they want to see exactly some more information about this request, they can just click on it. Then you're going to see the comment, and they're going to see a little bit more information on your specific changes. You can see the commits and files that have been changed. If you click on files change, you're going to see specifically what was changed in comparison to the files on the forked version of this repository versus the original. Original. You can see right there, the only thing that's changed is the number three is right there with the comment. And if they decide to submit to the pull request, all they need to do is click on merge pull request. And all this information is going to pop up here on the screen about how to do certain things in a terminal. But I think most people just come in here and click on merge pull request. And then you can leave a comment if you'd like in regards to why you accepted this pull request. So I think I answered most of the questions that I've received on Git so far. If I didn't, please feel free to leave additional questions below. Up next, what I'm going to do is go back into App Inventor, finish off that tutorial, and then I'm going to start a brand new Android, Java, Eclipse, what have you, tutorial that is going to be completely different and hopefully even better than my last one. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.